1965 Admiral Color Roundy Television, vintage television, painted a greenish teal. This TV uses the D11 series chassis. And there's a bit of a story behind this TV. You might have seen this if you're on any of the Facebook vintage television pages. This was kind of making the rounds. And what ended up happening is three of the younger guys went in together and picked this up. Andrew, Richard, and Peter went in a three-way split for about, I don't know, $35 each because the eBay bid closed out at $105 for this. And I went and picked it up. They asked me to pick it up. It was uh, an 85-mile drive one way, so it took about three hours to get it. There's sort of two groups that are interested in collecting and restoring vintage televisions. There's the boomers, which have the annual vintage television meetup. And there are the younger people that kind of watch my videos and look at social media. And they're interested in learning about vintage electronics and getting into it. But a lot of the time the boomers tend to have this elitist attitude and they don't really support or encourage the younger kids to get into it. And by younger kids, I mean Gen Z. And that's really kind of sad because as the boomers die off, what's really going to happen is the roll-off dumpsters are going to come in and the legacy is going to go in the trash because they didn't take the time to invest in teaching the younger generation how this stuff works and I really support and encourage the the younger kids to get into this and you know what if you get something like this and it ends up being sacrificed to your learning then so be it that's how we all learned By the way, this video is in 4K. Yeah, brilliant, right? A 4K handheld video. Anyway, it looks like we got one vacuum bulb here missing. Jet's been missing for a while. Look at the amount of dust on that socket. And why are all these vacuum bulbs clinky dinkler? It's almost like it got dropped and rolled down a hill. They're all in there at different angles. Looking at this is not too hope inspiring. See how the discoloration in the rear where the cathode is back here. See how it's a, a more golden brown color. That's discoloration from hours of use. So that's not a real pleasing sight. Also this is broken. The CRT is a replacement, it's an RCA highlight from 72. We can look at it. Uh, there's a few original Admiral tubes in here, not many. This thing's got some hours on it. The IF strip. Got RCA damper and horizontal output. Here's the flyback. Shunt tube, high voltage rectifier back there in the back. That one right there. This one right here is the focus rectifier. Uh, that right there is a high voltage rectifier. It doesn't look too melty it almost looks baked if I can get the right angle here 
I really can't, but it almost looks burnt. I'm not quite sure what the fascination with this was. You know, these pop up all the time on eBay. What is this? 19 VABP22. If we look at the service tag. Uh, it specifies here a 21 FP22, which is the typical number for this. And also the tube that's missing. This tube here is the BD mod, the one that's missing. So let's check the CRT. Like I said, my hopes are not too high when I see all that discoloration there in the rear cup. But you never know. Maybe the attraction to this was the color it's painted. Maybe it's, I don't know, it's just odd, you know. And it's not so outrageous, but it's, it's like 60% dog bed ready, something like that. I'm looking at the schematic. This is the full schematic here. It's the same width as the TV. And this is undoubtedly a RCA... CTC 15 clone. Um, it uses the 6JE6 horizontal output. It uses the 6GF7 vertical output, vertical multi vibrator, 6BQ5 audio output. This is all the same as RCA. It uses the same color demodulation as RCA, the 6. GU7 triodes to drive the CRT. This is a 6 GY7s uh, as the Z and Y D mod. So this thing is it's a mirror image, meaning on an RCA it's it's flipped around like this. It's transformers on this side and the high voltage is on that side, but that's kind of irrelevant when you get into the guts of it here. It it is undoubtedly a uh, RCA CTC 15 clone or very very close to it we could wonder if we could find licensed by RCA hidden somewhere in this thing I'm going through and plugging these bulbs in and a lot of them weren't even half in and I'm looking at this the way this is it's like this thing was dropped or something and I was so gentle putting it loading it there was no way that I dropped it with enough force to actually get those things to tip out of the socket never know okay 6.350 uh, let's see Set cutoff. I know this thing's just going to be like, what's cutoff? Oh, yeah. That's about what I would expect. I'll give it a little bit, we'll come back. The other thing we can check is where are these set? Uh, not all the way up. Almost all the way up. Almost all the way up. Picture to bias. Let's see where that's set. I don't know. Okay, after about 20 minutes, the cutoff did come up to where I could actually set it. And these are the emissions. 
And for those of you who watch my videos, you should be familiar with this tester. All of these should be up at least halfway in the green for a good tube. A decent tube would be in the yellow, but this is really tired. So uh, would this set be worth restoring with this tube in it? No, it would not. We're going to resurrect it. We're going to get it to work. But uh, full restoration of something with a CRT of this quality uh, with that amount of discoloration, no. Not worth it. So I'm getting ready to power this thing up and I'm come up here to check on the volume control and I could swear this thing is glued into place. I swear these are glued into place. Well, there it is. They look legit. But those damn things are affixed. I'm starting to get the picture here that this TV was something that somebody fixed up uh, to use as a decoration in their home. That's why we have these cheesy AA5 radio knobs on the channel selector and these are glued into place. Well, of course it doesn't work, but the question is how do I get this apart? I need to talk to the kids that bought it because I don't want to Go and start really wrenching on it and break it. That wouldn't be. I am connected on to the power switch there and it is open. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bypass it. Or maybe here's what I'll do. I'll put this here. Put this on VAC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 500 watt light bulb to power this up. This is not worthy of my time for a Variac. And I know this is the kind of unsafe half ass stuff that I do that gives the boomers nightmares that make the motors burn out in their CPAPs. But I'm going to do it. So it is probably a little careless, but you know what? Who cares? You gotta have a little fun in life, right? It's a it's a hundred dollar novelty TV, really. So it's like one one level below Mickey Mouse. Twenty one volts AC here, which indicates that the switch is in is in the off position. So here we go. I'm just going to bypass it. And our 500 watt light bulb is illuminating. Uh, what I should do is I should take this out. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I can't do anything with this. I can't adjust the volume. I can't do anything with this. With those knobs frozen. I guess we could see if the high voltage comes up. I'll get the high voltage gauge. Okay, here's what we have. Now keep in mind, we have this light bulb in series kind of protecting us in case something was to short. We have 15 kilovolts, which is good. That's a good sign. We have a noise from the speaker. which I believe is with the vertical frequency. I guess not. Um.
brightness. We have nothing on the Okay, I am going to bypass the light bulb. Okay, here we go. Bareback, full bore. None of the capacitors were getting warm through the light bulb. So let's see what happens. We're at 100%. Twenty four kilovolts. No volume control, no fine-tuning adjustment. Oh, I'm starting to see something here. I bet this, yeah, there it is. I bet this would get channel six. A little bit excited, and I'm thinking, well, let me pull this knob off here and dig through the stash and get you know a fine tuning knob and a regular channel selector knob and of course this is freaking glued in here to where I'm pulling on it and shaking it and dragging the TV across the pavement it is so glued in there and it's not my TV I don't want to just start ripping on stuff and damage it it's not right to damage other people's property I'm just going to go into the IF on this because I cannot handle this tuner. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to try and take this up to... There we go. How do I adjust the vertical? Boy, that looks like total garbage. Guess I could um, 
Try and get that color demodulation tube in there. I think I have the volume all the way up and the TV off. I put a 6GY7 in here, which is a color demodulation, and I moved the 6GH8 color oscillator tube around. And I got this kind of beautiful barber pulling rainbow. And, and I could, this is when the color oscillator is too far a frequency. I'm sure I could adjust the oscillator coil next to the 6GH8 and get this to lock in. Okay, I get that beautiful pattern. But yeah, it's just it. doesn't want to sync the color demod frequency is off. So I believe this red coil right here is the oscillator coil. So I'm going to try and turn this and see if I can pull this in. Okay, here we go. Where am I going with it here? Am I going the wrong way? Ah, look at that! Clinko Twinkulate! Oh boy, look at this. It's totally smeared and totally blurry and totally looks like trash, but it's all there. The color demod is working. But of course it's working, it's RCA. There's our tint. There's our color level. Nice. There's our <laughs> smeared. Man, it's like the focus just went bye-bye. What happened? Just for clarification on the IF input, since the tuner is pretty much worthless with this glued on knob and no fine tuning, what I did is I unplugged it and this device will put out um, video IF, it'll, it'll put the, it, this thing will put out the signal that comes out of the tuner. So we're just eliminating the tuner which is a 45.75 megahertz IF and I'm just coming out of here and feeding that directly into the IF strip which is this right here so I'm just bypassing the tuner which is cool because it gets any faults with the tuner out of the way now the CRT is just grossly weak on this thing and that's why it's blurry and smeared, but also the convergence is way off. So what I might do in a follow-up video is have it produce a picture. We'll try and do something with this. Uh, maybe try and do something with these glued on knobs. I mean, they're glued to the, they're like super glued to the, the frame of the cabinet not not the, the the pot I think they're glued to the pot too so this might this might almost be a struggle not worth fighting but I could make it produce a picture right now just by using a BT modulator fed with a converter box fed into the IF but it's gonna be a horrible smeared unconverged picture but we can see it's it's all there. It's all the chassis is good. The CRT is trash. I adjusted the focus to get the best I could, and that's it. So that's it, Admiral Roundy. Uh, it was obviously a display for somebody's house. 